What's going on, y'all? Terrell Friday here with Future DDS. And on this installment of the DSE series, we have Sean Mojaver from the Herman Ostrow School of Dentistry in USC. I hope I said that right, right? Sean Mojaver. Yes, you did. Okay, cool, cool, cool. cool. That's perfect. Nice, nice. Well, Sean, thanks for taking some time out and speaking with us, man. Absolutely. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well, man. It makes everything that's going on, man. Just just sticking in it, sticking, sticking yeah, to man, it. Man. We're all just trying to survive out here. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, man. So, I mean, if you could just uh, give us a, uh, you know, reintroduce yourself briefly and, uh, you know, tell us where you went to school for undergrad, uh, what you majored in undergrad, where you're from originally as well, um, okay. and, and then uh, what year you are at, at, um, at USC. For sure. Well, my name's Sean. You already got that part right. So I'm originally from San Diego. I've been living there my entire life before I went to a USC. And I went to a University of California, San Diego, too. And I was a uh, general bio major, too. So I just, you know, everything was nice in San Diego. We were by the beach. It was, it was so relaxed. I mean, the, the bio program was hard, but, you know, yeah. when, you're, when you're right next to the water, it's all, it's all super good. <laughs> Make it a lot easier, huh? Exactly, man. You, you have no idea. And you take advantage of it. I mean, you, like, really take it for granted. So it's, it's, it's really crazy. But um, yeah, it was nice. I was doing uh, actually pre-med first when I was at uh, UCSD and then a lot of stuff changed. I was working in too many hospitals. I got really over it. And then I had some uh, family dentists who kind of started like showing me the ropes in that direction. And it was nice because it was already pretty close to a uh, pre-med, a lot of the same classes. And it was just way more hands-on being in the dental field. And I'm, I'm sure you know that. So I just started doing a little more exposure in that end. But then I, I got into USC and I finally moved out of San Diego. And, I'm in LA now, so yes, it's a good time. How are you enjoying it out there? It's different, very different. <laughs> I don't know if you've been to San Diego or, or LA, but I mean, it's like San Diego's like just a beach and it's like very, very laid back and LA is just LA. Yeah, you know, just yeah, the, yeah. The LA, here in San Diego is very relaxed, like you said, relaxed, more chill. Exactly, back, but, you know. exactly. it was definitely, it was, a, it was a big transition. I think it that took me at least a year to finally feel comfortable living in LA and kind of figure everything out, so. Gotcha, gotcha. And what year did you say you were at USC again? Second year. So right now we're finishing up our second year. I mean, we were until all this happened. And uh, we have uh, what's like interesting about USC is that we had a uh, we have like summer school. So I, I don't know if a lot of the other dental schools have that, which I, I think a lot of them do. Um, where you kind you know you kind of have some more classes in the summer. Mm -hmm. So technically we're finishing up second year now, and we would have started our clinic time in this summer right. and then at that point we would have graduated sim lab so we technically would have been third years mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean that's pretty much it i was just finishing up sim lab in my second year got you got you so um and you say you you were pre-med at first did you have to take any time off in between undergrad and actually getting into usc i did i did not by choice though i mean I, I would have been ideal for me to just go straight into it but when you're kind of right. figuring stuff out it you definitely need that time off um how it worked was I was originally taking the MCAT uh, my fourth year at UCSD. So I, I spent some time doing that and I was already kind of finished up with all the, uh, you know, prerequisite courses for that. And then once I switched over, it was by the application cycle, you know how it's rolling admission yep. for all that stuff. So I had to start studying for the DAT that summer. So that already kind of put me at the point where I couldn't apply that cycle. So I ended up taking like a, a year off kind of involuntarily. So that's, 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 I had that one year off before starting at a USC and I have no regrets whatsoever. You really do need that time off. I mean, the, the, there's a reason they tell you that it's because it makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. Nice little recharge, man. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Kind of to figure it out, especially if you're switching over from another, another field or another major, it's like you can spend that year going and seeing, you know, if you really do like this and kind of learning a little bit before school starts. Right, being able to shadow and everything. So exactly. So you 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 spoke about the MCAT, you know, having to switch over to the DAT. What yeah. was the number one tip that you have on how to do well in the DAT? And also, uh, if you remember any resources that you use. What yeah, you yeah. No, don't worry. I, I remember that clear as day, man. That was it was a crazy <laughs> time. So I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean, I don't I don't wish this upon anyone, but when you're coming from the MCAT to the DAT, it's like there's a lot of similarities. But I mean. I personally thought the MCAT was a lot more difficult. I mean, I don't know. It depends on who you ask who's going to say that. So studying for that put me really, like, far ahead in terms of the sciences and even the reading comprehension because I was taking sort of Kaplan classes for that and the strategies that they taught me through that 
made it a lot easier for me to study for the DAT. Got so it. when I was studying for the MCAT, I was I had that sort of, you know, the cap and the kind of a guided learning. And then when I switched over to the DAT, I spent maybe like two or three months of that summer. It was just self-studying at that point because I feel like I had the foundation from that. Mm -hmm. And what I was using for that was the Ari's boot camp, the DAT destroyer. Um, DAT destroyer, I gotta be honest with you, I thought it was really hard. I didn't take it seriously. I probably finished maybe 20% of that. I mean, it was good. It was good to kind of get your exposure, but it was just, it was, that was a lot for me. Yeah. I mean, for, for people that, you know, have the time and the, the patience for that, I highly recommend it because it, it makes the DAT seem easier. But Ari's boot camp for me was huge. And then I read also the Princeton Review, which is like a very, very unconventional source for a lot of people when they're looking into uh, studying for the DAT. But that for me, it was just easy because it was like a book, you know, it just tells you chapter one, this, and then you just keep reading. And it's like, you technically have your study plan at that point. So that helped me to get a lot more of the nitty gritty, but it was all practice questions. Oh my God. Like yeah. taking practice tests and practice questions, I think were the game changer. Yep. So drilling, drilling a lot of questions to seeing. Yeah. Questions. Oh yeah. A lot of questions. That Ari's bootcamp was, was great. Oh my God. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. cool. So, hey, everybody out there listening, pick up. Yeah, honestly, man. honestly. Take it from me. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. So specifically for USC, man, uh, you yeah. know, a lot of people decide on schools that they want to go into or dream schools that they want to look at. Um, mm -hmm. Do you guys have any type of uh, pre-dental or feeder programs at USC, whether it's like a master's program or impression right. day or pre-dental day, anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. No, we have a lot of those. So for me personally, I didn't do any of that stuff because obviously I was at UCSC being right. in a different city. It's kind of hard to just keep going up and, you know, taking advantage of all that, especially when you don't even know you know, when you're switching over to this field, it's sort of last minute. Um, but yeah, USC, a lot of my friends, what they did is they, they were kind of split up. A few of them did masters before coming to U, uh, USC and they did their masters at USC, whether it be for like global health, epidemiology, some sort of science -y master. But there's also, I had some undergraduate uh, USC friends who, who went there and they were part of the pre-dental society there. It was like kind of like a fraternity. They called it DDS, Delta Sigma, which is like, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, but um, it's, it's extremely funny. I didn't believe it when I saw it, but they had that, and that was nice because they actually get to come to the dental school, and they have, you know, sort of like little field days and all that. Um, I don't know too much about it because obviously I wasn't a part of it. Sure. At UCSD, what we had was we had our own pre-dental society, um, but it was harder because UCSD didn't have its own, um, what is it, dental school. It doesn't have its own dental school, so... It's like, you know, a lot of your exposure and all that stuff had to be in private settings or, you know, in, in random, random locations. Um, so I didn't even, you know, for me personally, I didn't even, uh, wasn't really part of a pre-dental dental society. I kind of did a lot of the other stuff on my own with like through family and all that kind of stuff. But USC does have a lot of, uh, a lot of those resources. Um, I'm an ambassador for USC. It's like, I'm one of the people that kind of gives the tours and helps out with the interviews and even does some of those dental day stuff. Mm -hmm. So in my experience, with me being exposed to the pre-dental students and the, the people that come for something called fight on Fridays, which is like kind of see, you know, it's kind of like a mini tour of the school. Um, through my experience with that, we do come and we show them, you know, the setting, what, what people are doing. We even have like little, you know, fun little activities like, Oh, here's a type and you know, this is what we would do. So sort of exposure stuff like that. And I think it's really, really cool to just see how the school, you know, functions and obviously, you know, to make an appearance and make face. Right, for sure, for sure, for sure. So yeah. you guys seem to be very involved in that, and it is good, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, for anybody who goes to USC for undergrad, this exactly. to stay tapped in and uh, tap into some of those pro programs. Of course, but, there's uh, so many of those opportunities, definitely. For sure, for sure. So, you know, when you were, uh, you know, you actually getting all your application and everything together um, and deciding what schools you wanted to go to, do you remember how many schools you ended up applying to? Oof, I... I ended up applying to a lot of schools just because, you know, it was kind of like, a, you know, sort of the whole last minute situation. Right. I was, I was really scared. So I ended up just applying everywhere just to kind of like feel it out. Um, I think I applied to everywhere. I could, you know, see myself living mm -hmm. obviously too, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know if I could have ended up in the Midwest to be completely right. honest I, or, <laughs> or in places like Minnesota. I remember I applied to Minnesota too, like no disrespect there, but it was a uh, app for me getting, I started getting back interviews and that was around, you know, Christmas time in January, and I was just looking at the weather app, and it was like negative three, negative. Oh, I, was like, no. I, <laughs> I was like, I'm not even even a uh, Boston. I actually, my all my family members went to Tufts. Yeah. So it was really, really, it was really cool. I was like, oh, I'm for sure gonna go to Tufts. You know, I love it. And then the snowstorm hit, 
a couple years back during that app, uh, application cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I can't, I can't do that either. <laughs> Good for you, man, for, for you being able to handle that. I mean, yeah, I mean, man. I love my SoCal. <laughs> Moved up to Florida, so I definitely feel you, man. Like, the Florida yeah, man. Yeah, definitely... Especially you. You had way more sun down there. Oh, man. <laughs> And the humidity, jeez, rough, bro, rough. But uh, so, so next coming up, um, just, yeah. just more to that. How was your actual interview experience at USC, man? When once you, you know, you put in the applications and everything, and you got the interview right. at USC. If you could take me through that day, uh, kind of, yeah, of course, that day. Of course, of course. So it's actually it was actually the weirdest interview I've ever had. So kind of tying this into how USC works and all that. USC's one of those schools, I'm sure you know, it's very different from a lot of the other dental schools. They do the whole PBL thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And how that is, is PBL stands for problem-based learning for, for the, the people that don't know. And how that whole, thing, whole sort of thing functions is like group learning. It's not like lectures, you know, not like, you know, the, the traditional sense of education. It's like more, okay, here's a case. And you, you break up into groups of like, you know, A and figure it out as we go along. That's and then the concepts you learn within that case end up sort of translating to the basic sciences and stuff you'd expect to learn, you know, in dental school. So that's what they did for our interview. We showed up and instead of having it be like a one on one interview where, you know, you talk to this person, they ask you, you know, <laughs> you know random questions like, oh, like, what would you say makes yourself stand out? They put you in like a group setting and they're like, OK, here's a case. You guys all work it out. Let's see how you how you work in a group, how you do all this stuff and all that. So the for the first like you know two two or three hours of shit. So we were doing that whole sort of session, which was kind of crazy because it feels like you know, okay, now I have to make myself look good, mm -hmm. but I also <laughs> have to you know be able to work in a group. So how, how am I going to make this work? It was a very very crazy experience. They actually changed the interview process now. They did the MMIs now, ever since the last year. So I, I'm not really sure how that works now because they don't obviously don't let us into the rooms even when we're helping out with those interviews. Um, this is what, what are they doing? The MMI, you know, the multiple mini interviews. Okay. Yeah. So the, they, it's like, instead of the, doing the whole, uh, the PBL thing, they're taking people into like smaller rooms and either there's like a facilitator for each one of those who will go ahead and ask a different question or set up a different scenario. Yeah. So it's, like, the, it's, it's not like even the same like interview process anymore. Interview or something. <laughs> What's that? So it's like a speed dating interview or something. You exactly, just, exactly like a speed dating interview. Like, okay, you have like, they'll put a prompt outside and they'll be like, okay, you got one minute to think of your answer and then walk in the door and give your spiel. Wow. It's crazy. It literally is speed dating. Wow. That's the perfect way to describe it, yeah. So that's what they did. So that's why it was a lot different. So for me, it was like that setting. And then they would still have us in the group and they would ask like, you know, really random questions. And sitting there, like if you were on an island, what like three things would you take with you? I was like, what, like, what am I supposed to say to that? How do I make this related to yeah. anything that I did in college? You know what I mean? Like any of like the extracurricular stuff. Like, so yeah. it, was just, it was the weirdest interview. And I wish, honestly, like the problem was right when I got the interview to USC because it was Southern California and because, you know, I really loved, I've loved USC since I was a kid. I didn't end up doing any of the other interviews because tech, like technically was my, you know, our first choice. Right. And so I didn't get to experience a lot of the other interviews. So it was, it's really, really hard for me to, you know, compare it to how another school's interview would be. And I think, I think that's one of the, you know, things I look back on that I wasn't too, too fond of, but you know, it worked out. And then no yeah, regrets. Very, no, it worked out. It's exactly. Awesome. <laughs> so after you, you know, you finished up the interview process and everything, you got the acceptance to go to USC. And yeah. Then, you know, you're excited. You're going to still be in, in Southern Cal, but, uh, so how was that first year for you, man? How was, you know, just how were you feeling throughout that first year as well as, you know, if you could give me a little. Uh, yeah, of course. Eye into, like how the curriculum laid out and like getting. Yeah. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was, it was definitely crazy. First year, like I knew that USC had kept like, you know, priding themselves. They kept telling us that, oh, you know, we really, really want like we're really clinic heavy and all that sort of. But I obviously didn't take them serious. I was like, okay, what does that mean to be clinic heavy? You know, I mean, what does that mean to like, you know, want, want for things to be practical and all that stuff. So I remember during orientation week on, we had the orientation week, you know, you're supposed to get familiar with the school, figure out how the program works, your classes, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. I remember on like the, the same day that we had our white coat ceremony on orientation week, they made us drill things that morning. Oh. It was the craziest thing ever though. Okay. <laughs> go to sim lab right now start drilling this is your first homework assignment i want you to drill into this like start drilling these designs 
I was like, what the heck? I haven't even like been white coated. I haven't even done anything. I haven't figured anything out. Now you're going to want me to start drilling. So that was my first, like, ex- ex- I guess, first impression of going into USC. And that was crazy. I didn't even know how to like hold this. I was like holding it like a pencil. Yeah. I was like, how, where am I, what am I supposed to do? Like, which direction do I go? They gave us like this little, like it's called a learner prep. I, yeah, I learner prep. Yeah, exactly. exactly. So they gave us that where we were supposed to just do shapes. And I was like, oh my God, I have to go get ready for this. Like my parents are here for this white coat ceremony. <laughs> so that's what it started out as. And then it started like essentially speeding up. So within that first, I guess, three to four weeks, it was absolute chaos. You know, they started, it's like, looking back, it got way easier throughout the year. And, and they told us that the first, you know, month, obviously you're figuring everything out it's going to be clearly very difficult and that's when they started having us do impressions on each other you know make stone casts of our impressions mount them on the articulator and it's like all of that within the first month was insane and then right after that we started going to the wax ups and as like you know all these projects kept being introduced every couple of weeks um it did get easier because you, you start to figure out how things are working, how faculty grade you right. and do, and you know, how, how the system sort of works. And obviously your hand skills get better at this point too. And like, once you learn the basics, like impressions, you know, casts and, and drilling, it's like, there's only so much variation after that for, for a first year. But it's that, that, those first, that first month or so was easily probably the most chaotic time of dental school it was nowhere near as bad as that until we got into anatomy during our yeah. first summer yep, <laughs> and then that yeah, was a whole they, different, that's a whole different piece yeah yeah <laughs> so, so how was, how was the cool. setup for you guys because you said you guys are pbl style so right you guys have like an anatomy lab then you guys have like a, a exactly where yeah. all of y'all come together and exactly so how pbl works for us is pbl essentially it's it's like discussion you know an undergrad a lot, of, a lot of colleges, they have discussions that come, especially if it's like, you know, a public university. It's like when you have the 300, 400 person lecture halls like we did at, at, my, at UCSD, it's yeah. like you have the smaller discussions once a week, which is like one hour, which you meet with the TA and then you sort of, they make sure you really, you know, you're paying attention, you know what you're doing. Right. So it's like the discussion and only the discussion, right? We have lecture once a week for the most part. And it's like, maybe like, depending on the class, like, let's say it's like, um, indirect where it's like crowns, you know, bridges and all that. So we'll have like maybe like two or three hours on Tuesday that we, you know, we go over the basis of basics of that, the materials, a lot of stuff. And the rest of the week is just lab and PBL. So lab, you're going to have obviously your same lab time where they give you projects based on the course that you're in. And then PBL itself is twice a week. So right now I have it on Monday and Friday and it's for, it's, it's less for second years because you know, the, what, there's less, you know, to, to learn as, as, as it goes on in terms of the, the, uh, the academic stuff. Right. But so for me, it's, it's now two hours on Monday that we're in that discussion group of around 10 people and two hours on Friday. And they'll be like, okay, this patient presents with this. This is part one. So on Monday, we'll do part one of this case. We'll just, we'll, the, the patient will have so-and-so sets of issues, so-and-so drugs they're taking and stuff. And then we'll have like to research, each person will have to research a different aspect of that mm-hmm. so let's say it's like this patient's on you know amoxicillin or something as, as like a first year so one person's gonna have to um their their project for the week is gonna be to research uh, amoxicillin write a paper on it and then present it to the group in a way that you know they understand got you okay. someone else will do like the cardio vet, like the heart or something like that so that's that's how that works okay. and for first years it's four hours per day but it's second years it's it's second it's two hours a day so it gets less but it's 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 interesting it's definitely it, it took a little bit of getting used to but but i don't mind it because i like i like smaller settings yeah. you know because it keeps me accountable so I, I do i do end up learning as 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 different as as it is to you know what you're used to in a uh, classic you know lecture environment yeah I, feel so, like, I heard i feel like i've been hearing a lot of schools moving towards that direction they yeah small group pbl type. definitely has its pros and cons yeah for sure has its pros and cons Got you know it. it's 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 different the thing about that is you can't it's really really hard to teach like the fundamentals of let's say pharmacology because you have to keep presenting cases. you can only present so many cases that you know have every drug that you should be learning in uh you know in for for, for the dental field so it's like it, it does end up leading to, to, to gaps here and there, but the, the style of learning, it's like, if, if you, if you stay accountable, you can, you know, it's, it's, it's great. 
So, so I guess, uh, you know, just to start wrapping up here, got two more questions for you, man. The first one is going to be, uh, what is something, and I know this is going to be subjective because you only have your own experience, but what's something yeah. you speak about your school and your experience at USC? What, sorry, you cut out. Could you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Yeah. What what uh what is something unique about your experience at your school at USC, man? What's something unique about your experience so far? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know besides the whole PBL system and like everything being so different, I honestly think that dental school itself at USC has been way more enjoyable than anything I've ever done before whether it was high school whether it was undergrad and it's just because of the people I'm around and the way that you USC is like sort of organized you know like being in LA and having the dental school on the main campus of USC so how USC is set up is they have a medical school a medical campus which is like all the way on you know the other side of like downtown LA and then the dental school is the only I guess health or like perfect yeah health uh, school that's part of the main campus so you're all a part of everything that USC has to offer whether it's you know the football games whether it's like oh, the brand new village that they set up they set up like a whole village which has like its own target Trader Joe's as like it's like they built their own city and that's literally across you know like probably 20 feet walking from the dental school so it's like the way the way that it's organized is is so like crazy like during our lunches we'll go over and we'll have like you know there's 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 like literally a, a a bar right there and we'll just go eat there it's like you know the the gym's right here it's like the way it's set up just makes it so enjoyable for us and it's it's just it's just been such a such a great time and it's nice it's like the people that i've met coming into usc too is mm -hmm. it's some of the greatest people you know it's like everyone it's like very equally like-minded because uh, i don't know it's just it's been a really really good time i don't even know how to say it but no, I feel like it's the bro. Like you broke me yeah. up. Campus too, seeing the games. Yeah, like, gotta be awesome. I know. <laughs> okay, and the USC football games don't even don't even get me started on that. So I can only imagine, bro. <laughs> yeah, man, it's it's a good time. Got so. you. So, last question, man. Is it? Yeah. If you could go back uh, in time and tell yourself the younger version of yourself, you know, any words of advice uh, why you yeah. were going to dental school? What would those words be? Definitely. When I was applying to dental school, as, as I said before, it would to be to give the other schools that I did have interviews at more of a chance. Because I feel like when you, you know, sort of go with just one, it's really, really easy to take that for granted throughout the rest of your, you know, dental school experience. Like right now, obviously, you know, I don't know if you feel the same way, but there will be times where I feel like, you know, it's like, ah, uh, this school's doing this wrong or, or you know, I, I wish this program wasn't laid out this way. And if I would have seen how other schools are run, maybe I'm like, okay, is it just how dental school is or is this just how USC is? Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, I really, really do wish that I went and took all of my options into consideration instead of just driving in, you know, to, to just one. So that's right. a big thing. Cool, bro. Appreciate that, Jim, bro. Of uh, course, bro. You know, Thank you again. You know, it's going to wrap up the interview, but thank you for taking some time out and speaking with Absolutely, us. Absolutely. Always. Sure. I'm glad I did this. Viewers and, you know, all the presents got a lot of good information from you, man. Good, man. I really, really hope so. I really hope I'm helping out some people. I appreciate it. Oh, for sure. For sure. So if anybody has any questions for you about USC or about yourself or your personal journey into dental school, man, what's the best way they can get in touch with you? Honestly, anyway, man, I have like just look up my name on Facebook, Sean Majaver, or find me on Instagram too and send me a private message there. I'm pretty active on social media, as you know, people will come to find out. So then message through at any way, shape, or form, I'll, I'll definitely be out there to, to reply. So, gotcha. And what's your, uh, what's your IG handle? It's, it's my first and last name, Sean Majaver, no spaces. Okay. So if they just search that, they'll find it too. Gotcha. We'll make sure we put that down in the description. Uh, but Absolutely. Again, man, on behalf of Future DDS, thanks again. And Absolutely. everybody else out there, man, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the notification bell so you know when you so you know whenever we post up new content. Uh, stay tuned for the rest of the series. Uh, we're going through all the dental schools, so it's going to be a lot of good information for you guys. But until next time, it's going to be it. See you guys later.